In this video, we'll discuss monocytes and how they function in keeping your immune system strong and healthy. Blood consists of red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma, and other components including platelets. White blood cells make up just approximately 1% of blood yet serve a crucial function in warding off diseases. Each of the five subsets of white blood cells serves a distinct function in the body. Monocytes are one such kind. Monocytes are an important part of your immune response alongside other white blood cells. In blood test results, they're called absolute monocytes or monocytes, absolute. Monocytes are produced in the bone marrow and then released into the bloodstream. Once they reach various tissues in the body, they mature and get rid of virus, bacteria and other potentially dangerous pathogens by isolating them. Apart from strengthening the body's immune response, they also get rid of dead cells. Monocytes represent about 2-8% to of the white blood cells circulating in the blood. That is about 200-800 to monocytes present per microliter of blood in healthy people. The monocyte is the largest form of white blood cell and is almost twice the size of a red blood cell. Monocytes stand out from other cells in the body because of their size under the microscope. Pathogens cause an infection when they enter an organism. In many cases, the pathogens are usually viral or bacterial cells. Once germs or pathogens are inside your tissues, monocytes spring to action. If germs are fire, then monocytes are no less than firefighters. Monocytes can be differentiated into two types of cells. Macrophages. They are the first line of defense against these germs. Dendritic cells. They enlist the aid of other immune system cells in the battle against pathogens. An increased number of monocytes in the blood is called monocytosis. It occurs in response to autoimmune diseases, injuries, burns, blood disorders, infections, etc. Anything that decreases the overall white blood cell count causes monocytopenia, a condition denoting absolute low number of monocytes. For example, blood-related infections, burns, chemotherapy, HIV, aplastic anemia, or other infections. However, it is important to understand that having a low number of monocytes is not an indication of a disease or condition by itself. It however represents a warning sign that there is an increased risk of having an infection or some blood disorder. If you have a low or high monocyte count, you will most likely not experience any symptoms because of the count. Instead, any symptoms you may be experiencing are a result of the disorder that caused your monocyte count to be abnormal. People with low levels or high monocytes will experience general body weakness and fatigue, fever, pain and swelling. The immune system is burdened in fighting infectious agents and maintaining the body's health. This contributes to extreme body weakness. Patients are advised to eat a healthy balanced diet especially during medication to ensure the infections do not spread or reoccur. The most important thing to do is to keep the immune system strong by eating the right kinds of food and abiding by good health practices as advised by your healthcare provider. Vitamin C rich foods like oranges and lemons can contribute to the strengthening of the immune system. Exercise and workouts also help keep your immune system strong. Do not overthink and keep stress at bay. Keeping the body always clean to avoid infections will also keep the monocytes count within the normal range. Treatment typically involves treating the underlying condition. The kind of medication to be administered will depend on the extent of the monocytopenia or monocytosis health status of the person, presence of secondary infections, and related symptoms. Infections are treated in specific ways, for example, by administering antifungal drugs, antibiotics among other medications, and corticosteroid therapies.